Nittany Line Roar here, and I'm back with another experiment video. Ever since my first one, people have been commenting a lot on these experiment videos about scenarios they would like to see. Uh, so if you have specific scenarios you would like to see, make sure to drop it in the comments so I can see it and look at doing it in the future. Uh, but I saw a number of comments about starting boards in Empires and Puzzles, and so I thought I'd do an experiment on this one. And so the the premise behind this particular experiment is that some people say the more you take of a certain color, the less you get of that tile. Um, so I'm going to take a look at that on starting boards, and I'm going to do it in three different scenarios. In the first one, I'm going to take mono red against Teleria. In the second one, I'm going to take a 3-2 team against Teleria with three red and then two purple. Uh, and then in the last scenario, I'm not going to take any red at all against Teleria. I'm going to take a 3-2 blue-purple team. And we're going to see if there's a difference in starting tiles between these three scenarios. So the hypothesis that I've been presented with by a number of people is that the more red I take, the less red tiles there will be on the starting board. So we're going to test that out today. I'm going to do 10 of each. This video is probably going to be a little bit shorter than the other experiment videos because I'm just going to take screenshots of the opening board and go through it. I'm also going to post my record along with this as I go too. Um, so let's dive in and here we go. This is the first team I'm going to take and it's a mono red team. First, I want to talk about the difference between a hypothesis and a null hypothesis. So I've already stated that the hypothesis presented to me in the comments is that the more red heroes I take, the fewer red tiles I should have. The fewer red heroes I take, the more red tiles I'll have. So the hypothesis is that my starting boards will be different in each of these three scenarios. A null hypothesis basically says that that hypothesis is wrong, <laughs> that there will be no difference between the three scenarios and for that matter if we just take the number of tiles in the board and divide it by five which is how many colors there are in the game uh, then there will be no difference between my starting boards with this team the other two scenarios that I take and just the average random number of seven so basically we've got 35 tiles on the board we divide it by five colors that gives us seven. That means that if it's totally random, if the starting board is completely random, uh, we should have around seven red tiles on each board, right? And if the null hypothesis is true, that means that no matter what the scenario is, we should have around seven red tiles. Of course, it's gonna be higher or lower, but over a long period of time, it'll be around seven. Now, if the hypothesis is true, so the null hypothesis is wrong. If we can reject the null hypothesis and that there is a difference, we're gonna expect the fewest amount of average starting tiles with this team. So let's see what happens. Okay, that was interesting. After the first 10 trials, we have an average starting board of 7.6 red tiles, which is a little bit higher than we would expect if it were completely random, but probably within the margin of error. So I would say this leans more towards the null hypothesis, since it's pretty close to seven, of uh, providing no evidence for the hypothesis that the more red heroes you bring, the fewer red tiles you get. But we have a couple more scenarios left to go, so let's continue on. This next scenario is gonna be a 3-2 team with heavy red and a secondary color of purple. And according to the hypothesis, this team should get a couple more red tiles than in the last scenario because I'm taking fewer reds. However, I think that's gonna be hard to do since the previous one actually matched the null hypothesis uh, of seven pretty closely, but we'll see.
All right, that's another 10 trials down with the 3-2 red-purple team. And interestingly enough, that was almost the exact same number of tiles as in the previous scenario with actually just a little bit fewer. So if the hypothesis were true, we would expect there to be more red tiles than this one since there were fewer red heroes. But actually, it was almost exactly the same. And again, probably within the margin of error of the null hypothesis, which would be seven starting tiles on each board. So as we've now gotten two scenarios down, it's starting to look like the null hypothesis is probably true. But let's go on to the next scenario and see what happens when we don't bring any red whatsoever. Now we're gonna go with a 3-2 team of heavy blue and a secondary color of purple. And according to the hypothesis, we should get the most red tiles now because not only am I not taking any red heroes, I'm taking the weak color of blue against a green tank. So I should get all kinds of red now if the hypothesis were true. If we can't reject the null hypothesis though, then that means that we'll continue to get around seven red tiles even though I'm not taking any red heroes. Let's check it out. After taking absolutely no reds whatsoever, we ended up with a starting board of 7.7 .7 red tiles on average, which is pretty close to the null hypothesis of 7. For the sake of the integrity of this experiment, I just want to show you my watchtower that Sephira at the bottom here was the first opponent the game gave me, and I just went straight through taking on each Teleria tank opponent that the game gave me in order and that I wasn't picking and choosing opponents or just showing you screenshots of favorable conditions in any one particular order. So these were all my opponents and how I did against each of them in each of the conditions all the way to the end there. So, okay, let's go ahead and analyze this. After all three scenarios, you can see there's not really much of a difference between the starting boards of all three scenarios. It didn't matter if we went with mono red or 3-2 red purple or no reds whatsoever. There was only a difference of about 0.2. That's 0.2 between all three of the scenarios. Now, it was only 10 samples each, but that's pretty close for that few number of samples. And if the null hypothesis were true, then that means that we would expect about seven red tiles per board, and it turns out that was pretty darn close. The hypothesis was that there would be a difference between these, with the mono red team having the fewest tiles and the blue purple team having the most tiles. And that's just not true, so we cannot reject the null hypothesis. There doesn't appear to be a difference with how many heroes you take and your starting board, how many tiles you get of a certain color. It truly does appear to be pretty random. And I would expect these numbers to be within the margin of error, um, give or take a tile, and it's less than one tile. So all of that to say that it doesn't look to me like Small Giant Games is trying to screw you when you take multiples of one color against an opponent. They're not giving you fewer tiles of that color at least according to what I see here. Now, I do want to talk about the record a little bit, even though that wasn't the main focus of this video. Uh, there was something revealed by the data in this video, uh, even if it's subtle, that I've seen show up in hundreds of samples of war data as well. And that's that I had about a 10% higher success rate with the 3-2 red-purple team than I did with the mono team. Of course, there's a fierce debate going on uh, always between mono players and 3-2 players, which one's better. Um, and I've personally believed that 3-2 is slightly better. Looking at our war data over time, you, people who use 3-2 in war tend to be 10% more successful uh, than people who run mono. And that showed up again here, even though this sample is small, it does reflect what I've seen in our other data as well. That 
3-2 tends to be the best setup you can take in raids and war. Um, unless, of course, you can see with the blue-purple team, uh, that majority color happens to be the color that's weak against the tank. Um, that is a penalty that knocked me back down to 6-4. and four. Uh, So basically, there was no difference in my record of taking mono-red, which should be strong against the green tank, and blue-purple, which should be weak against the tank. Those records were the same. So I think that goes to show, at least a little bit, that mono's not that great. It's not bad, but I think you can do better if you take 3-2. I will provide one more exception to that, though, too. And that is, if your attack team tends to be a lot weaker than the opponent you're taking on, then sometimes you need that high tile damage just to get any kind of win. So if you're taking a very weak team against an opponent, then sometimes it's more helpful to have the mono team just to try and be able to punch the tank out before you get to even set any specials off. All right, that's it for this experiment. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And if you have thoughts, throw it in the comment section. I do read that. I'll respond. Give me ideas for future experiment videos. Tell me what you've seen in your data. I'm curious to know. I'll catch you later.